let's dig a bit deeper into versioning data. When you version data, there are a couple big reasons why you're going to want to pick a new version. One is that the name chooser picked bad names and you need to rename some of the elements. Sometimes the developer or the project manager who picked the original names picks some names that wind up being confusing. And so what happens is when you go out and you try to do implementations or you find clients are implementing things, you might find a common set of bugs. And the common set of bugs might be related to poorly named items. In this case, pick new names, create a new version. Another reason to version data is if you're adding or removing fields. And I say this as a maybe because if the fields aren't required and they can be forced to show up at the end, you might have some folks who will argue, look, I don't need a new version. I can just inject them at the end. In general though, if you're changing the contract and you're changing the way that things are set up, it's fairly inexpensive to create a new version of a data structure and then migrate in between the two items. So I would recommend that if you're adding or removing fields, create a new version of your data structure. Upon versioning the data, make sure that you allow existing old and new clients to work together. You're going to want to make sure that your underlying business objects are version agnostic. They're unaware of which version the client might be calling into. As a result, you're going to want to make sure that everything that you build uses a sort of facade and you present the data layer out to your clients as a sort of machine-based user interface, where the objects that you're presenting out to the user are data transformation objects that interpret from one version into your business objects and from your business objects back out to the version that your client expects. One reason that you don't ever want to version data is for reordering of the fields for aesthetic reasons. If you have to reorder fields because you screwed up, you had some clients deploy against your stuff but not against the standard, and now your standard implementation no longer works with other standard clients, that's a reason to version the data. However, if you just don't like the fact that one value is after another, forget it, leave it alone, let things go. There are bigger things to worry about in this world than whether or not your order of your items was exactly correct. So one of the questions that I sometimes get asked is, would you, I ever version data independent of services? And the answer is yes. If I'm doing agile development, I'm going to do this all the time. If I'm shipping every one or two weeks or even every month, I may allow my data to version independent of my services. However, if I'm delivering implementations out to a client and saying, this is something that's shippable, in that case, I'm going to actually version my data objects. So there are some caveats around this though. As I'm versioning these items independent of my services, I have to make sure that any new fields I add have sensible defaults. And the new fields also have to be nullable. The reason why I want them to have sensible defaults and be nullable is because as I'm adding behavior to my application, as I'm depending on those things showing up, I want to make sure that someone who doesn't supply that information continues to work. The other thing I want to emphasize is that any of those new fields have to be ordered at the end of the object. A lot of fields that get added to these objects appear in alphabetical order. That's the default ordering that WCF assumes whenever you serialize as XML. You can add an order parameter to your data members that indicate what order these things appear in. That order, if it appears at the end of the object, will at least make sure that you don't break existing clients. The other reason to do this is that if things are ordered at the end, some, some toolkits are going to allow folks to read the data objects by ordinal position as opposed to by name. That's a dangerous way to program, but it's possible to do that because there are use cases which exist. If someone is using that use case, you want to make sure that you don't break their application because of the fact that the thing they expected at the second ordinal position in the array of elements that came from the XML is a new value type. Now, if you do wind up in a situation where you need to change the name, here's how I would handle it. I would make sure that I have a version one namespace for version one. And here the name change is gonna happen because the original version of this structure said that the quantity was spelled out as QTY. And maybe that's because it's the original value that's being used in the business objects. However, what we find is that our clients who consume this object don't know what QTY means. So instead what we do is we change things around and we make sure instead that we spell it out as quantity. This is again, one of those name changes that while a bad idea is surprisingly common, the reason why they're surprisingly common is because it's easy for folks to argue about these. If someone wants to argue about this long enough, it may be faster and easier to just let things go and make and spell things out. Again, if it's a name change where it's making things easier to use for somebody, that would be a name change that you kind of go with and you say, okay, it's going to fix a bug or a complaint that we have from customers. And the way we handle that was we change the name, but then we also change the namespace. So here we have a version one namespace, we kick over to version two namespace. Note that these are now two different objects in the XML namespace sense of things. I might have a conversion from the line, from the line item from V1 to the line item from V2 by translating QTY to the new quantity. But as far as everyone's concerned in the outside world, these are two different data objects.
Now, another reason why I might do a version on a data object is because I add new members. Like I said before, if you have a new member that's required, make sure you're defining a sensible default. One of the caveats here, though, is that if no sensible default exists, you have a serious bug in the previous version. That is, did you miss a feature? And if you think that you have no sensible defaults and customers won't change their objects, they won't change the way they code, what I've found in the past is that folks can suddenly find a sensible default that will make sense for the member that used to be required. The other piece of advice I gave was for new members, make sure you place them at the end of your data object. Even when you're creating a new version, put them at the end. What this does is this eases the upgrade burden by making it simpler for someone to add those new properties to their objects. So when they're adding that XML element and then manipulating things, by adding things to the end, it's very easy to find the place in code to make these updates. To do this on a data contract, you use the data member order property. What this does is it informs DubCF and informs the serialization infrastructure where something should appear when it's being serialized out. This is true for both JSON and for XML. On reading in, the order is used to figure out whether something is in the right position. Order is ignored on JSON, but respected on XML. If all else fails, you can also inherit the data transformation object if the new item breaks old clients. So what this does here is it says create a brand new object that allows you to accept both the old version of the object and the new version would just be inherited item where the differentiation is in how the serialization format appears for the extra new items. So let's look at how we actually add a new data member. Here I've got a purchase order and I want to add some more properties to it. So first thing I do is I copy the V1 data transformation object. I update the namespace to, v, to be V2 and then I copy in all the old data members so everything works. I then upgrade the line item to be V2 line item. And finally, when I add the order date, I make sure that this order date appears after the ID and the line items and the purchase order ID by setting the order equal to 100. This makes sure that everything, that the order date will appear after all of the other items. This simplifies migration for my clients. I can also add new members via inheritance. And to add a new member via inheritance, what I do is I can create the new namespace. This will be V3. And then I say that I have a comments item at the end of my purchase order. What's going to happen is the root of the object is going to look like a V2 purchase order. The V3 enhancements will then appear in a new namespace that contain comments.